America's pastime is, was, and always will be shooting. Hi everyone, Finn and Flask here. So today I'm going to be talking about muzzle loading accessories. When you first start getting into muzzle loading, you're probably like, what do I actually need besides my weapon? So I'm going to break this video down into basically two parts. The must-haves to start, and then I'm going to go through other things that are nice to have. Before we get into the meat of the video, if you wish to support the channel, you should check out my eBay store where I sell muzzle loading accessories. It'll be linked in the description. Here is a quick overview of the things that we will be talking about. So when you're starting, things that you absolutely have to have are things like a powder measure. Here are a couple examples of powder measures. See, this one is adjustable. Well, these are both adjustable. You can set it to whatever depth you want for uh, the amount of powder you want to put in there. And this one is a little clearer. You can slide it up and down and it has a funnel so that you can pop into whatever you want and you also have more like high-end stuff there's like artistic powder measures out there and you can also make your own because see i kind of made my own from this piece of antler and this is from my trade gun so you can do different things with powder measures but you really need to know how much powder you're putting in so you can get some kind of consistency out of your shooting another thing that you really need is i'll put this in here right now you really need a range rod. It's not necessarily super critical, but I consider it critical because you need to be able to put different size jags. And when you're on the range, it's better to have something that's a bit more sturdy than your average wood rod that comes with it. And you also need jags for cleaning. Okay. Uh, generally speaking, on most guns, they come with the appropriate jag, especially when you're dealing with beginner type rifles they always come with the correct jag but you're better off having something like that available to you so a range rod you can get these things a lot of different places this is just kind of a cheap range rod that they have here it's nice to have a sucrets tin full of all your jags you have things like a ball puller and a breech plug scraper and I feel you actually need quality screwdrivers to start because you need to be able to take your weapon apart without destroying the screws. See, this right here has a different kind of tip than most screwdrivers have. Most screwdrivers are just kind of an angle wedge where this is kind of cut away and ground away, like say the edge of a, a grinding wheel so that you can get flatter inside of there and it fits better. You need to get a couple of different tips. You can get these kind of tips basically anywhere, or you can buy specific ones made for guns. And this is one that's made specifically for guns. It's made by Brown Owl. And, you know, there's other ways too. you know, I got this little hand forge turn screw, which is nice to have when you're in the field. Uh, you should have some kind of way how to pick your vent holes or your nipples out. You got one right here. This is just a needle. And then I got this built into a nipple wrench. Speaking of nipple wrench, you should have a nipple wrench for each kind of nipple that you're gonna be shooting. See, I have a larger one for musket caps. This is for regular percussion caps. And this one is for revolvers because you really need to be able to take those nipples out to properly clean your weapon. Other things you need is a short starter to start. Basically, you use this to put on the ball to seat it, to, to break the initial tension going into the barrel. And then you push it down. These are just a couple different designs. There's multiple designs for short starters. They're actually a little more common today than they were back in the day because most barrels were coned. So you could push the ball in nice and easy. But on most modern production guns, the, the, the bore diameter goes straight to the end where back in the day they would actually expand it a little bit so you could push a ball in and just use your regular ramrod to push it down but these are pretty much critical in the modern day unless if you comb the barrel yourself 
you need some kind of powder containment. You have flasks. You have horns. I'm going to do a more in-depth video on powder containment, but you need something to start. These are probably the most common thing you will find, which is a brass flask. And that's probably what you'll probably end up with first before you start getting into higher end things like horns and proper reproduction uh, powder horns. You should also think about getting a hunting bag, possible bag. They go by many different names, but you should really think about having one of these. And the last thing I'm going to say is an absolute necessary is you need some kind of protector in. You can get away with using things like Hobbies Number 9, but realistically that's not the best thing to have, but you can get away with it in the beginning. I like Ballastol better because it's water soluble and you're using water to clean most of your weapons. So now I'm going to show you the stuff that's really nice to have, but not necessarily crucial, but you'll probably want to end up picking up along the way. So you have different kinds of cappers. It's a bunch of different kinds of cappers on the market. This is a Ted Cash snail capper. These are good for revolvers. Then you have these straight inline cappers where you just put caps inside of here and you bring it down. This is only if you're shooting percussion. And this is a musket cap capper, which if you're actually hunting and stuff like that, like I suggest, musket caps are better for that. Now you have things like loading blocks. I made these loading blocks. This one is a half inch hole, which is for a 50 cal. And this one is uh, a 5 8 hole, which is good for 62 cal, 20 gauge. These are nice to have so that you can actually load round balls pretty quick. And you have them all set up for you. You can put your patch in here and just slide them right down the barrel and it makes it a little easier. You can make your own at home if you want, just get a board. Most people have 50 cals to start and it's just a half inch hole and a little piece of wood. When I'm making them, I like them to be a little thinner than your standard three quarter inch because if they're too fat, they don't really seat in very well. Different kinds of funnels are usually a good thing to have. Uh, this is useful for filling basically anything. You know, if you want to be running shot down things, and this is an old shotgun scoop, so if you're shooting smooth bore, having one of these is great because it has a different setups for how many drams or how many ounces of shot you have. You, uh, this has designations on here, and if you're shooting shot out of a shotgun or a smooth bore, basically all you have to do is just set it once, you scoop your powder, pour it down the barrel, put your wads in, then put your shot in here because the general thing is to do a square load you can adjust that here and there but that's the general practice and then i have this very small copper funnel which is very good to have for powder horns there are different types there are different ways on how to fill uh, powder horns and most of them just have a small tip so you need a very fine funnel to be able to pour your powder in some powder horns have a screw tip that you can put a bigger funnel in there and it's easier to, to fill but generally speaking most of them just have a quarter inch hole so you need a quarter inch funnel if you're firing cap and ball revolvers you probably want to get a loading stand this one's made by traditions it's not exactly the greatest one in the market there are much better ones but this gets the job done another nice thing to have is like a smelting kit this is just a little lead ladle you can get single ball molds i don't have a single ball mold yet but I have the little lead ladle when one of those single ball molds cross my path for a size I have, I'll end up getting one. I have regular molds in the shop for making uh, 595 round balls and 490 round balls. And I also have molds for uh, conical, conical bullets. So I just use my regular lead pot, but it's nice to have one for the field. Here are some things that are relatively useful in the flintlock field. A little flintlock hammer so you can nap and resharpen your flints. And this is what you call a toe worm. Okay, so this is material called toe, which is flax fibers, same thing as linen, essentially, but it's this really rough and aggressive material. And you can 
wind it up inside of here and it acts like a basically a burlo pad going down and scraping your barrel another thing that's flintlock specific is a hammer stall so basically what you do is you slide this over your frizzing so that in case if the hammer comes down it doesn't spark because there is a possibility even with no primer being in the pan it could go off it's unlikely i did actually a little experiment about that and i didn't get any fires but it's, it's a good thing to think of is having a hammer stall later on when you get more proficient you might want to get a mainspring vise so basically what this does is help you compress the mainspring on a lock so you can take it apart if you need to there are many reasons why you may want to take apart your lock when you get a little more advanced into muzzle loading. This is a shot bag that I use with my trade gun. And you could also put balls in here if you want. There's a bunch of different designs for ball bags so you can keep your stuff organized. I generally don't use ball bags. I just put them in the bottom of my pouch. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is a BID CO2 discharger. These things are really good to have in case if you get a stuck ball. They help you out quite a bit. The only downside about it is, generally speaking, it's hard to get the CO2 cartridges for these because most CO2 cartridges are just push in and they see these ones you actually have to screw. So these are a good thing to have in case if you dry ball, you can shoot the uh, ball right out of the barrel. Well, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to muzzle loading accessories. And if you appreciate my content, I'd really appreciate it. If you liked, subscribe and share this channel with your friends. It'll really help me out. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.